My name is Casey Keene. I'm the Director of Programs and Prevention for the National Resource Center on Domestic Violence. And I'm joined today by Yvonne Ortiz, who's NRCDB's Training and Education Specialist. Hi, Yvonne. Hi, Casey. So I want to take a moment to welcome today's presenters. Um, Ali Saffron is the Communications and Outreach Coordinator with the No More Campaign. And in this role, she manages content for No More social media channels. She coordinates partnership projects and assists organizations and individuals working to bring No More to their communities. Ali has worked in the movement to end domestic violence and sexual assault since 2011, beginning as a rape crisis hotline counselor. And in 2013, she founded Surviving in Numbers, a nonprofit which supports survivors of sexual and domestic violence internationally through prevention education and anonymous story sharing. So welcome, Allie. Thank you. I'd also like to welcome Lynn Brewer-Muse, Communications Manager for the National Coalition Against Domestic Violence. Lynn is responsible for developing and coordinating the social media and digital communications materials for NCADB. She has extensive experience in marketing, writing, social media, and website development. In addition to her role at NCADB, Lynn serves as the co-chair of the Media and Communications Subcommittee of the National Task Force to End Sexual and Domestic Violence. She was the recipient of the 40 Under 40 Award from the Boulder County Business Report and the 2011 Young Careerist winner for Boulder Business and Professional Women. Lynn is the author of two novels with two more in progress and runs an online literary journal that she founded in 2006. In her free time, which does not sound like she has much, Lynn drinks lots of coffee. Welcome, Lynn. Thanks for having me here today. So we're excited to offer today's webinar in preparation for Domestic Violence Awareness Month in October in partnership with NCADB and No More. Um, after Yvonne and I share a little bit about the history, the themes, and the purpose of Domestic Violence Awareness Month, we'll explore how to motivate people to action and we'll share some helpful tips and resources that the NRCDV offers through our Domestic Violence Awareness Project. Then Lynn from the National Coalition will talk about how you can join their campaign honoring the 30th anniversary of DVIM. And Allie will share how the No More Toolkit can help activate your community. So jumping right into it, um, many of you may be familiar with uh, the history of Domestic Violence Awareness Month, which began as a day of unity um, in October of 1981, uh, conceived by NCADB. Um, and the intent was really to connect advocates uh, who were doing this kind of work. Six years later, uh, the first Domestic Violence Awareness Month was observed, um, which happened to be the same year that the hotline was established. And in 1989, uh, there was a public law passed designating, officially designating October as National Domestic Violence Awareness Month. So we traditionally have had um, this kind of common themes around mourning, celebrating, and connecting that are related to, you know, our work to celebrate and honor Domestic Violence Awareness Month. These themes really um, have come through in a variety of different ways, and the ways that they are celebrated are as unique as the communities um, that celebrate them. And so you have local programs, a network of local programs all across the country initiating different activities um, in their communities to mourn those who have died because of domestic violence, to celebrate those who have survived domestic violence, and to connect uh, people in our communities um, to this work. Uh, to end domestic violence. In 2015, um, the Domestic Violence Advisory Group, which is responsible for um, coordinating messaging around Domestic Violence Awareness Month, this is a group of national, uh, state, and local partners who are invested in um, messaging um, and resource development around Domestic Violence Awareness Month conceived of uh, utilizing this concept of awareness plus action equals social change to introduce a prevention element uh, to our messaging for Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Now, we 
um, can't take credit for this uh, equation. It really was born from Transforming Communities, uh, which is a program in California that has been doing prevention work for decades. Um, and it moves us from thinking about Domestic Violence Awareness Month as simply a time to raise public consciousness and introducing an element of action. So a call, call for action for people to do something to help create change. We have since developed a number of resources around this idea. Uh, we have an infographic that we have available to help people communicate this important messaging. We have an awareness highlight blog, which digs really deeply into these concepts and what they mean to our work. We have a series of talking points forms that uh, individuals can use to help talk about these messages in their communities um, and with the media, um, with legislators and others. And we've developed a Prevent IPV Tools Inventory, which is a library of prevention resources that can be utilized during Domestic Violence Awareness Month. So that's a little bit of an overview. And now I'm going to pass it over to Yvonne, who's going to talk about what motivates people to action. Thank you, Casey. One of the things that we hear, the questions that we hear from our advocates is how can we bring light to our own uh, Domestic Violence Awareness Month, to our month. So one of the things that we need to think about is what really motivates people to, to rally behind a movement. Uh, what, wh why, how do you choose a specific one to follow? Is it our personal experiences or interests? Maybe we're moved by a family member or friend that asks us to join, or we just heard a message that moves us to join. We're talking about engagement. We're not talking about just one time, a one-time effort, about creating a movement. And we already have our movement, the domestic violence movement. But how can we, in a way, we can say, spice it up? And everybody knows that from politicians, brands, nonprofits, creating a movement is considered a holy grail of engagement. So we're talking about engagement. A movement drives awareness, thoughts, and action, seemingly sweeping everybody that's around. Everybody wants to be a part of that movement. So how and why do we join? Well, uh, one of the things that, that researchers say is that people crave to be part of the community. And this is, uh, you know, one of the things that when we start an awareness campaign, we say, well, everybody's going to join. We're so sure that everybody's going to join. Well, it's not as simple, you know. Uh, well, a tagline or an online petition or a pledge can draw, you know, a few followers. Movements need a little bit more. People join social movements to be a part of the community, to feel like they belong, to be connected to something larger than themselves. So that's the first thing that we need to, we need to think about. And the second thing is that they want to do something. Movements require action, like Casey just explained. And many aspiring ones miss the mark by either asking too much or making the action so generic that it becomes meaningless. The standard default for political or nonprofit campaigns sometimes are just to sign a petition, you know, a pledge, to volunteer or send money. But what we know is that people want to do something more. Sometimes we tend to think, well, you know, everybody's so busy. No. We want to be a part. We want to do a little bit more than what you're asking me to. So we need to be very strategic. We need to pair that ask with something specific that people can rally behind and become part of the story. We also have uh, some people that they want to know what's in it for them. You know, this is, this is a part that we don't like to talk about. We think that everybody's so committed and our cause is so compelling that people are just going to join just because it's the right thing to do. But for some, that is motivation in itself. You know, it's, it's not enough, but it's rarely enough to make a movement truly take off, you know, just that motivation. So we want to make sure that there's something else for, for our community. Why should they join our movement? They also want a personal, you know, they want to make a personal statement, whether wearing the bracelet or being filmed while doing the ice cold bucket challenge, I, I don't remember the name, or just wearing pink. 
equal value nonverbal symbols that associate them with a larger movement on community. More than status symbols, uh, these convey a value system to the outside world. It, they show how deeply we care about a cause and how connected we are to our community. So it's important that we have something visual to share with, with our community. And this, this could be a, a very powerful motivator and an awareness driver. So uh, examples are t-shirts, ribbons, pins, uh, stickers on your cards. So that's what they, they crave. They want to make a personal statement. So also, when we're thinking about our events, we need to choose the right activity. A key task when we're starting to plan our, our awareness events for DVAM is to assess the type of events that are most appropriate for your community. What is working? Look at our other nonprofits. What are they doing? Who is, who is uh, engaging more people in your community? What is working? So, and we all know that the purpose of our DVAM events and activities is to raise, raise awareness. Um, and open people's minds to change. But we need to move them to action in order to do this. With a little bit of creativity and, and a little bit of money, we can adapt as organizations and present events that make sense, that the people feel that they are being considered, their culture is being considered. In this case, you see a picture of, of the bike ride, and the bikers, you know, rally in support of the domestic violence program, their local program. Why don't we look at other groups and, and ask them to connect with us to support our, our event? And also, we need to consider non-traditional partners. There are many individuals and organizations in our communities that have an interest in violence prevention. Hold an open forum. Uh, for anybody that is interested to learn about the work that you do about domestic violence and, and establish a coalition or a task force with them to promote TV awareness in our communities. Sometimes we think only about, you know, our usual partners. Let's think of, you know, of other ones that are not sitting at the table. And we have a, a list here. We have community partners, faith organizations, hospitals. We work a lot with hospitals. Um, we also have schools, housing authorities, everywhere where our community um, gets together. That's where we need to go and, and search and find a partner, somebody that is interested in joining us. And that person is going to help you help bring others into, into this coalition or, or task force. We also uh, need to consider that there are many other non-traditional domestic violence uh, service providers, I'm sorry, let me go back to the first one, like Central Latinos. If you have a large Latino community in your area, it's a good way to reach out to the Central Latino. We also have uh, community centers, beauty salons, barber shops, and uh, they can be great places to reach out to your community. Contact ministers, local civic leaders, and encourage them to conduct outreach to their members. Also, uh, an idea is just to local to connect with local organizations in your community because they have regular newsletters, mailings that they reach out to their members, listservs. Offer them just to write a piece for their newsletter. It could be on domestic violence. It could be on the services that you offer, on anything that's related and that helps you send a message about our upcoming activities. Once you have your community partners, you have a list of those potential partners, and you start thinking, well, I'm really unsure. I don't know where to stand. We have less than two weeks left to plan my outreach activities. Well, you know, don't stress. Today we have plenty of ideas and tools that are going to help you, you know, put together some amazing activities with, with very little effort. So here are some tips that that we put together, and the first one is just determine how much time you have to plan an event. You know, you need to be realistic. Is that something that we keep on talking about? Be realistic. Uh, find out the type of events that are most successful in your community. Here in my community, uh, everybody likes to run, so a race, even though you need time to set that up, 
but it, it's a type of event that it's really successful. Also, take a look at your budget. Maybe you have funds, maybe you don't, but it's good for you to have an idea of the amount of funds that you have or not. Meet your audience's needs. Just don't plan, you know, something that you would like to see. Just make sure that it's what your community needs. And again, be realistic. Uh, don't plan a huge event because you only have two weeks. Make sure that it's realistic and that you have enough support uh, to, to take care or to plan that event. Also, we have uh, here a list of event ideas. I'm not going to go through each one of them. But we wanted to share with you uh, just a basic list and to let you know that our uh, Domestic Violence Awareness page has, um, has a list of events. We have an events database where you can go and look at, at what's going on, for example, in New York or, you know, for the event. You can post your event. At the same time, you can look for events that are being uh, hosted in, in another state and possibly recreate them to accommodate the needs of your community. Also, don't forget about uh, social media. Social media is really big. Ali and Lynn are going to be talking about social media campaigns, but we wanted for you to, to check out one of our greatest tools. We just um, published a technical assistance guidance. Uh, it was very powerful, uh, written by Rachel Hess for No More, and uh, it focuses on the importance of engaging your community through social media. And by uh, this, this TA guidance, gives you a lot of ideas and information. And one of the, the, the things that I, that I like the most about this TA guidance is that it, it helps to develop a social media campaign it has those seven, I believe there's, yeah, seven uh, tips and what to include and what you need to, to make sure before you start that campaign. And uh, the last resource that we want to share is our DVAP toolkit, a toolbox for raising awareness and inspiring action. And this toolkit takes you to our domestic violence awareness um, page. And it's a one-stop shop for domestic violence awareness uh, tools and resources. As you can see, you can have, you can access campaign ideas and strategies. It talks about different awareness highlights, the different talking points. Uh, it has uh, templates that you can customize. It has graphics that you can download for free and many other resources. We also have an online store where you can find pins, placements, ribbons, anything that you need uh, to have a successful uh, TVAM. And this is our, our DVAM page. And you can, you know, like I said, you can find a lot of ideas and, and materials that you need uh, for this, this uh, October. And now I'm going to pass the floor to Lynn from NCADV. Lynn, you might be muted. Thank you, Yvonne. I was on mute talking to myself for a moment there. <laughs> um, I'm excited to be here today to help everyone with their last minute DVAM preparation and to introduce you to the DVAM Turns 30 campaign. So next month marks the 30th anniversary of Domestic Violence Awareness Month. And here at NCADV, we're using it as an opportunity to honor the accomplishments made collectively by the field. And we're doing this for several reasons. One, people love anniversaries, especially big ones, like 30 years. That's a huge accomplishment for us all to celebrate. Two, sometimes when we're in the thick of our work, it's really easy to forget how far we've come in a relatively short amount of time. So honoring this anniversary reminds us that in the last 30 years, we've made some remarkable strides together. And three, it's a unique chance for us to look back on our history, to bring it out of the past and into the present. So if you're looking to bring some DVAM Turns 30 to your Domestic Violence Awareness Month campaign, you'll want to start with our official social media toolkit that we've made available. 
like the Resource Center Toolkit. It's a one-stop shop with online resources, some sample social me media messaging, infographics to share, and a list of 30 accomplishments to honor from the last 30 years of DDAM. Now, depending on your organization, you may use the toolkit in different ways. So let's examine each of these in more detail and talk a little bit about how you can use them in your DVM campaign. The first item you'll see in the toolkit are online resources. The hashtag, always about the hashtag. It is so important to include that in any post related to DVM Turns 30, whether it's on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, or any other social network that you're using. The printable placards will let you download single documents that you can print and bring to any live events that you hold throughout the month of October. You can choose from a ready-made option or a customizable option where someone can actually write in what the anniversary means to them. And with either option, your event attendees can hold it while being photographed or taking selfies. You can make a statement with your online profile picture by adding the logo to it. And also, we have links for both DVAM on our website and our quick guide blog posts so that you're not constantly searching for content to share while you're also simultaneously planning your event. So, next in the toolkit are sample posts for Twitter and Facebook. You can join the DVAM Turns 30 conversation, share some statistics and blog posts to raise awareness, and honor the milestones made in the last 30 years. You can copy and paste the messages as is, or update them in your organization's voice. We've also included some downloadable images that you can use to share a statistic or information about domestic violence. And if your organization has created some of your own, share those as well. Social media posts that include an image get more engagement, on average up to 35%. Plus, you can reuse that content on image-reliant social networks like Instagram or Pinterest and grow your audiences there as well. Maybe your organization already has sample messaging or infographics available to raise awareness. October is a great time to bring these out again and share them with your networks. For example, NCADV's most popular campaign over the last year is DV Facts which share statistics and information about domestic violence. So we're, we've prepared some messages that combine both the DV facts and DVAM Turn 30 hashtags. And we're excited to see what combinations of hashtags your organization will be using. We've also compiled a list of 30 of our favorite accomplishments that demonstrate progress on a national level. These include milestones like the passage of the Violence Against Women Act in 1994, the National Domestic Violence Hotline receiving its first call in 1996, and the appointment of the first ever White House Advisor on Violence Against Women in 2009. Now, the list of 30 accomplishments also gives you a chance to tailor the campaign to your community if you wish. You can do some quick research and find out when did the first domestic violence shelter in your community open its doors? Was it in the last 30 years? What about your state coalition? What policy or laws has your city or state passed that protect victims and survivors of abuse since 1987? You can add any momentous milestones from your community to the campaign by tweeting or posting about it and including the DVAM Turns 30 hashtag. I can't wait to see what local, state, and regional milestones that you share with us. So now that we've covered what's in the toolkit and some different ideas on how to use it, let's see which option is best for you and your organization. One big question is, do you have time, resources, and staff to create a full DVAM campaign in the next couple of weeks? If you don't, you're probably want, going to want to grab it and go You'll love this sample social media messaging that you can copy, paste, and post in just three clicks. And you'll also appreciate the placards that you can print and use at your event. But if you have the time, staff, and resources, as well as the desire for a campaign that is more personal to you and your community, consider this toolkit as inspiration. 
You can add to or create your own list of 30 accomplishments, social media messages, placards, and more. And so now I'm sure you're wondering, where can I get a copy of the DVAM Turns 30 Social Media Toolkit? You can access it in three easy steps. Go to ncadv.org, sign up to download the toolkit via email, open the email, and download the toolkit from the link provided. And that's it. I hope that you find the DVAM Turns 30 Social Media Toolkit useful as you put the last touches on your Domestic Violence Awareness Month preparation. I look forward to any questions you might have about the DVAM Turns 30 campaign or the toolkit, but for now, it's time to turn things over to Allie. Thank you so much. I'm Allie Fabrin from No More. I'm the Communications and Outreach Coordinator, and I'm going to talk to you about our No More Toolkit, um, which some of you may already know, and for those who don't know, No More is meant to be a unifying symbol around ending domestic violence and sexual assault. We created the symbol so that anyone can use it um, as a way to, you know, create community change and activate your community, and our toolkit is a larger part of that. So I'll be talking to you about how to use our toolkit and what's in it today. So like I just said, the purpose of the symbol, which is that field circle for those of you who don't know, the purpose of our symbol is to raise visibility, encourage conversation, and help break social stigma around domestic violence and sexual assault. No more operates under the theory that increased visibility will help contribute to changing social norms and ultimately provide more resources and improve public policies around domestic violence and sexual assault. So we created the toolkit so that any organization or individual or team or club or fraternity or sorority, really anyone can use our toolkit and our symbol uh, to raise awareness in their community. So our toolkit includes some free, well, all of it is free, but it includes some free and downloadable materials which include graphics, posters, and signs, organizing guides. We also have a campus organizing guide, which we created in partnership with Breakthrough US, um, which is very timely if you're doing some back-to-school pieces as well or if you do any organizing on campus. We also have resources and handouts, as well as research and case studies on how using the symbol can be effective and how you can create change in your community. So one of the ways you can use our toolkit is by hosting a photo challenge in your community to challenge victim blaming and stand in solidarity with survivors. So as you can see on the screen, you can add your logo, sorry, you can add your logo to No More's co-brandable signs, as these folks did. Uh, invite your supporters and your networks to customize the sign and take a photo with it. And we find this is a great way to activate um, community members or those who've seen the symbol and make a statement publicly. As you can see, there are some examples of folks who have done that, and we have had many, uh, many of those. Another way you can use the symbol is to create a No More Day in honor of Domestic Violence Awareness Month, which, as you all know by now, is in October. You can contact your mayor, city council, or county board of supervisors to get a mayor proclamation, and we have a guide to that in the toolkit. And again, this guide is completely free and available online, and after I'm done, Talking, I will send you the link in the chat um, or follow up afterwards. Um, and you can use that proclamation as a baseline for contacting your local officials and easily can be adapted for Domestic Violence Awareness Month or any other events you may have throughout the year. Uh, we also have an events page on our website, um, nomore.org slash events, where you can submit your event that you're hosting or events, plural, um, for DVAM and beyond. And we can to our networks, and you can link back to it that way as well. And sometimes during No More Week, you can actually see events on our map that are happening around the country and around the world. So using graphics from our toolkit, such as the sign you can see on the screen, um, which is sort of signs around emotional abuse, one factor in domestic violence, you can use graphics from our toolkit and incorporate the No More symbol into your existing plans to show solidarity. There are many tools, as I mentioned, such as research, case studies, um, signs such as why you say no more and meaning why you say no more to domestic violence and sexual assault that can help you spread the word both online and in your community. To activate the online community, taking photos, we found to be really successful, photos with the symbol and speaking out to say why you say no more, why this cause is important to you. Another way you can use Toolkit, you may notice some tasty treats on screen, and we have seen folks make no more donuts in the shape of the no more symbol. 
Um, you can cable in your community and sell Purple No More t-shirts, which we sell online in our shop. Um, and No More Donuts or Cookies or any other good that you can think of to raise funds for your organization and for the cause. If you need ideas for a shirt, there's contact information on your screen for our vendor, which is TVT Industries. Or you can use your own. Just make sure you use the No More Style Guide, which is also in the toolkit, um, which focuses on how to place your logo with the symbol. Um, we have some very specific style usage guides in there. You can also partner with a local business to offer discounts to people wearing that shirt throughout the month of October for DBAM or beyond if you're hosting an event later than DBAM if you are under-resourced or understaffed. So next step would be to download the toolkit. Again, it's completely free, and we're also here to help you if you ever need any help with any of the tools or something's not working or you need more ideas of how to utilize those tools. You can email info at nomore.org. Um, I will send that in the chat shortly, but info at nomore.org, and we can help you figure out how to best utilize the symbol in your community. You can also take the No More Pledge, which is why we say no more, online at our website. And with that, I will turn it back over. Hi, Ali. That was great. And remember, all of these resources are downloadable for free. Just uh, follow the link that they have shared. We also want to invite all of you to our National Call of Unity that will take place on October the 3rd, uh, 2017 at 3 o'clock. It's a 45-minute call where advocates, survivors, service providers, we all come together uh, to, to celebrate everything that we have accomplished during this past year, to remember those that we have lost due to domestic violence, and to celebrate those that are living a, viol a violence-free life. It's, it's a lot of fun. Um, it's short. A lot of programs, what they do is they, they start their Domestic Violence Awareness, Awareness Month with this call. They get together as, as a staff. They turn on the phone and they listen. We are so excited to, to have uh, great speakers this year. We, we have... Uh, Mathina, she is going to be our inspirational speaker, and we have a survivor speaker that is Ruth Glenn from NCADV. She is going to be amazing. And we also have representatives from some other national and local organizations that are going to be uh, sharing a message of hope with, with all of our listeners that you don't need to register the information. Well, you get RSVP, but the information is right there on the slide. We'll be sharing uh, that RSVP link and the information to join the call. And of course, Eastern Time, I think I forgot about that. And we hope that all of you can join us. It's, it's a great call. It's a great start for us to, to reconnect, re-energize, and get ready You know, to start that, that month that we're whole month long waiting for. So with all of these resources and information, now we want to hear from you guys. Uh, what challenges are you encountering while preparing uh, your events for DVAM? Make sure to write your, you know, your answers or your questions or your challenges in the chat box, and we're going to be uh, hopefully responding to all of uh, all of your questions and, and comments. I'll give you a few minutes to write them down. And I'm so sorry, but uh, there's a cat here that is trying to jump into the monitor and say hi. <laughs> not, not part of our webinar. So I remember when I was working at a local program in Wilson, North Carolina, that you know I was the only uh, advocate working on you know our awareness events. And there he goes. And there were so many things that we did. We have so many hats. And one of the, my challenges was how to engage people from partner organizations to help me. And, uh, also, of course, we, we talk a, lot, a little bit today about engaging non-traditional partners. But when you are the only one, this seems like such a big task. I would like to know um, from Ali, Casey, or Lynn, how can I do this when I'm the only one in the program trying to, to prepare or host an event. How can I do it? I can amplify your message. 
engage on social media as early as possible is a great way. Um, Lynn mentioned hashtags, which is really important, and we definitely agree with that. Um, and we are a small team, even though we're mighty, so definitely familiar with that challenge, but I think really getting your message out there and repeatedly as well, not just promoting it that one time, but letting people know this is why this cause is important to my organization, for me as an individual, and this is what we're doing, I think really resonates with people. Yeah, I agree. Thanks so much, Ali, and I think it's such a good question and, and uh, it's a very typical experience. Um, from, from my perspective, I think it's important to invest in those relationships in the community throughout the year, that a lot of times we tend to call on uh, new community partners or existing community partners when we're preparing for Domestic Violence Awareness Month exclusively. And so I think it's uh, fostering those relationships year-round um, so that when it does come time for Domestic Violence Awareness Month, you already have the investment, you already have the buy-in, you already have those partners. And I think a lot of it involves um, giving as much as you get, right? So um, showing up uh, for when uh, other organizations have their uh, large events and their awareness months and their observances. Um, I think part of, um, you know, trying to get people to uh, be active partners uh, is, you know, being an active partner. So, I mean, that's how I would respond. I don't know if Lynn has other suggestions. Everything that... Um Ali and Casey have been talking about are both are just wonderful. And the only thing I would add is be kind to yourself and recognize your own limitations as one person taking on so much work. I think that's something that so many of us at so many organizations feel. Um, that if I just had one more staffer, I could have done this. And if I just had one more week, I could have done added this to the event. But we are all doing what we can do, and that's just great. So be kind to yourself in those moments when you're getting really frustrated about wanting to go beyond uh, where you might be in the moment. Just start where you are, use what you have, and do what you can. Thank you, guys. Those are great suggestions. I think I saw a comment, and I'm sorry, um, I think it's, and it was around uh, trying to, to engage uh, the community and uh, I forgot your name, I think it's Berger had mentioned that, that they try to ask municipal buildings to use purple lights to light the buildings at night, like other organizations have done, and they're experiencing some resistance. Uh, and he, he or she, I don't, I'm sorry, I don't remember uh, who posted the question truly, but it was saying that maybe it's a pushback because it's domestic violence and it's not something, you know, some other cause. What do you guys think about this? I definitely think that's been true. Um, it is still, as much as it's in the news, a really hard issue for folks to talk about. And as someone in chat was mentioning, people are worried about how to be um, conscious of survivors as well. So I do think that the issue itself is still a challenge. I'm actually wondering if others who are participating in the chat have, you know, experiences with this and advice to offer, um, you know, if you have had success with, you know, getting purple lighting in your in your uh, neighborhood, in your community, um, you know, what is it that that you feel opens that door for you? And I'm going to listen because I tried to get the Empire State Building lit up for purple on October 1st, and I was unsuccessful. So I want to know too. <laughs> And I guess I would offer, too, as people are responding, and I, I'm loving the text chat right now. It's so rich, and people are giving such great ideas for different events um, that I'm now lost in my own thoughts. Oh, and I think that's why it's important to introduce this prevention element, um, you know, to our campaigns, because I feel like um, when we suggest action items around prevention, we can show potential partners that we're moving toward positive change. A lot of times when people think about domestic violence awareness, what comes to mind are, you know, images of, of women with uh, bruises. And uh, the imagery um, has historically 
um, been unpleasant because the topics that we're working with are unpleasant, and um, we're ta we're talking about trauma. Um, and so, if we can think of ways to shift our messaging to promote, you know, what we're working toward uh, rather than what we're working against, um, it tends to promote, um, you know, uh, buy-in and investment. Thank you, Casey. There are lots of, of great uh, ideas on, on different activities I'm reading uh, here. The chat, the social media campaign. I, I love that idea. I think it reads like hashtag I wish you knew. Uh, that, that's a great idea, and if all of you can read it. That invites advocates, uh, survivors, and community members to share what they wish specific groups, like family members of survivors or the general public, knew about domestic violence. And you know, it is true. Everybody loves to wear the pink, I, you know, and everything pink, because I think it's it's a it's an easier topic to deal with when we're talking about violence against women. Uh, of course, we we hear pushback from everybody that we talk to. So our message is not going to change, but maybe what we can work on, like Casey's saying, you know, prevention. How do we get for people to understand that this is not just them, that it's not just not affect, you know, affecting those women or, or those men or the children, but it affects our community entirely. It's not just one part of the community. It's everybody. We're all affected. We have family members. We have neighbors. Ourselves, we're survivors. So that's what we need to, I think, the coming year, even and beyond, we need to work on educating our communities and, you know, the sense that this is happening and an impact, you know, to our community and we are our community, so it affects all of us. Let's so, see if we are, have any other comments or questions. You know, Yvonne, I'm noticing, I noticed a comment in the chat and it's specifically uh, speaking to the I Wish You Knew campaign that she noted that the challenge is how to make it accessible, safe, and inviting for, for survivors. And then I'm seeing other comments, um, you know, uh, about the challenge. So for the 5K that Martin describes in getting the word out, um, so engagement seems to be a challenge that people are posing. And so I guess engagement along the lines of you know, getting community participation, but then also in considering the fact that uh, survivors will be participating. Um, and so kind of that, how do we invite people and how do we allow survivors to feel safe and in, in engaging in our activities as well? So I don't know if anybody has thoughts on that. I think we found using this symbol as a way to engage whether you want to identify yourself as a survivor or not. You can say why you're against the issue without necessarily your um, without necessarily identifying your connection to it. Um, makes it fairly less less high stakes to join the conversation online and offline. Yeah, that I thank you, Ali. That's really an interesting point. It reminds me of um, the social media campaign that we've been working on at the NRC uh, this year. We're um, launching a, a hashtag "I'm an I'm an advocate" um, to kind of shed some light on the different roles that advocates play and the different ways that we can all be advocates. Um, and I think that the goal is really to broaden. Um, the idea of what advocacy means, uh, even to those who you know may not work in an advocacy role, but uh, may do important things in their community that contribute to having safe and healthy families and communities, and how important that is um, to our movement to end domestic violence. So, I think that too we've thought about the fact that survivors, you know, uh, can in many in many cases. Uh, survivors identify as uh, activists and advocates um, when it comes to this movement, and so it does kind of provide space for supporting Domestic Violence Awareness Month, 
um, without necessarily outing your survivor status if that's something you prefer to keep private. So I do think there are ways in social media that allow survivors to participate in ways that maybe uh, are not available in the community. Going back uh, to the 5K, I just thought about something. My son, he will travel travel anywhere, uh, depending if he, he runs, if he feels connected to the cause. So make sure not only to include your community, your, but include other counties, surrounding counties. Invite other domestic violence programs to join uh, the 5K. He will go, and let me tell you, you know, if you have a little medal, he would, he loves them. He hangs them, and he's 24, and he enjoys, you know, getting something out of it, uh, the T-shirt, just being there to support a cause. He does not go to any, you know, any race if, if it's not attached to a nonprofit. But he will look and seek and find those nonprofits that he feels passionate about, and he'll drive. So make sure to include other programs, surrounding programs, in, you know, in your state. Um, I'm sure you guys will be good. Uh, and we'll have a good number of people. And just make sure to tell everybody that it's a 5K, but it could be it could be a run, a race. It could be a walk run. Uh, and I hear of some programs that are allowing pets. Pets can also walk with their owners. So be really creative and 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 open, uh, open. Be open to to other programs joining in. So we see. Other comments here around, um, you know, kinds of uh, community potluck I see Heidi talking about, is, uh, you know, her first event and getting really good feedback about purple food and drinks, which is great. Thank you, Lauren, for those suggestions um, and chalking the sidewalks and things like that. And then um, Kayleen uh, was talking here about a celebration dinner um, that they host for survivors, which is more of a confidential um, kind of dinner celebration, but I think that, you know, food-related events are certainly things that, you know, um, can be a little more manageable, more realistic when you talk about that, Yvonne, uh, to pull together, and you, there are different audiences you can invite depending on, you know, what, what your goals are uh, with your campaign. So, yeah, I'm really excited to see these ideas. I'm uh, looking at Lauren's message, and she's saying that their big event is actually at the beginning of the month, and that they put uh, purple construction flags represent uh, DV statistics uh, with respect to their county, and the flags stay up for a month, and they have a photo, oh, photo of ceremony with everyone who comes to look, to look at the flags. So that's another great idea. It's low cost, I'm, I'm pretty sure. And I'm sure that it makes a real big impact for everybody that drives by and sees all those flags. That's, that's wonderful. OK, so Heidi has a, Heidi has a, a comment. And I said Heidi or Heidi, it's in Spanish, <laughs> the way that I pronounce it. I have never celebrated the BAM. This is my first time. Yay, first time we're in a sensing. And I am uh, hoping for great success. Because I am new at the center. Wonderful. Well, we, you know, we have shared so many great uh, information and resources that you can just, you know, download. So this week, go to all of our, you know, websites, uh, download all the information, and I'm sure that you'll be able to have a, a great, uh, great, uh, great event this month. And remember, it doesn't have to be something big. We only have two weeks left. But you can have an amazing social media campaign with the materials that Lynn and, and Ali presented. So Yvonne, I noticed that Lauren posed an interesting question in the chat around how um, other programs, locally or nationally, uh, how are we dealing with references to the current political climate, which I think is a really um, important question, certainly relevant, certainly on people's minds. I'd love, um, you know, for people to respond in the text chat if you have ideas. I know Sarah's saying uh, she doesn't have an answer, but she's running into it too. Um, I, I mean, I would see an opportunity on the local level to, um, you know, reference 
um, the political climate in terms of how important it is um, to keep our services funded, um, to talk about sources of funding and how our programs operate and um, what the need is and articulating that need. I think it's really helpful for um, you know, your audiences in particular at DVAM events to understand how um, their dollars um, might benefit your organization. So leveraging um, that discussion as a fundraising opportunity I can see is particularly helpful. I don't know if others have ideas in response to that question. With the decreased reports of domestic violence, especially that we've seen in the last few months, um, due to fears of deportation and pieces like that, we've really called out on social just that we're here for survivors, and no matter what, uh, we don't so much mention a political stance, but just the fact that there's decreased reporting because of those fears is very real for survivors and for their communities. So we really take a stand on that to say that we and with survivors and understand that those fears are real, I would say, which I think is a nuanced way of speaking to the issue without necessarily um, making it political. Yeah, and this is, this is Lynn again. Um, something that we're doing is just um, holding true to what we know. Who, we know who we are, and we're not going to change who we are. And we are going to continue to do this work no matter what the political climate, no matter who is in the White House. So we are here, we are here for survivors, and we are just staying true to that. And, and I want to um, suggest and you know offer a little message of hope. We recently, um, we're going to be posting our, our technical assistance question of the month, and its main theme is on hope. And how can we be messengers of hope when our communities are suffering so much? And as advocates, that's what we are. That, that's our main role. Not to provide false hope, but to provide resources and, and, and tools for our survivors to feel like there's hope. That's the last thing that we want to lose. And if we lose hope ourselves as advocates, you know, the rest of the community is just going to follow. Nobody's going to believe that. One day, we might eradicate domestic violence from the, from the homes of our communities. So it's important for us to, to be that, to find hope in little things. Yes, we're losing funding. Yes, every time we go out there, people are, you know, the climate is just terrible. But we are going to continue. We're resilient. We, we are going to be, we're survivors. We're survivors we're being touched by domestic violence in so many ways. And we are still, you know, walking, we're working, and we're waking up every morning, and we are doing what we love, is serving uh, victims and survivors of domestic violence. So, so let's, let's be messengers of hope. We, we can make it. We can make it. We have done it for so many years, and we're going to continue to strive. Any other questions, comments? We have a couple of minutes left. Another idea that we have is if you have an activity or an event that you want to post, to post it on our on Bonnet, our online library. You can check out events that are happening, you know, throughout the nation and, and territories. Uh, or you can even post if you have if you have an event that you want to share with with the rest of our of our constituents. Any other thoughts? So we have a couple of minutes, and I want to uh, open the floor to our presenters. If you have any last thoughts, any recommendations, any messages of since we're talking about hope, messages of hope for our, for our participants. I'll just add that we, you know, um, we have thousands of people who have taken the No More Pledge, and we have thousands of people who have downloaded the toolkit, and so many people are activating their communities in all kinds of communities in all kinds of ways. Um, and so that's always really inspiring for us to see. And just really, I definitely second Yvonne's message around us keeping the hope, um, because I agree that the rest of the community will follow our lead. Yeah. So. Thank you, Ali. Lynn, you want to share anything? 
Um, just don't get discouraged and keep up what you're doing every day because it matters. Even if you don't see it mattering, it matters. Thank you, Lynn. And Casey, any last thoughts? Anything oh, that you. I want to add? <laughs> no, I, you have just been wonderful. And I really appreciate all of the valuable information and ideas that's been shared by our presenters and also by our participants today. Um, I think that right now, um, it's almost like the air feels supercharged for activism. Um, and so I think we're at a really unique time right now where uh, people are feeling motivated to action. And so we have a really important opportunity, I think, this October um, you know, to leverage people's um, uh, desire for change. Um, and to offer some concrete strategies for how people can um, make the change that they want to see. So I'm so happy uh, to see all of your great ideas as you're energizing your communities around Domestic Violence Awareness Month. And I think that it does offer that hope that Yvonne was talking about. So thanks so much, Yvonne. Thank you. Thank, thanks to Lean and to Ali. Thanks to No More and NCABV. We are so, so happy to collaborate with you guys. And remember, any questions that you have, you ha you're going to be receiving our information. Give us a call. Send us an email. Uh, check us out. You know, our three organizations are really, really active on social media. Follow us. And uh, we'll be here for you. Yes, it's less than two weeks away, but Divan is coming. And I saw one of the messages that say, get you sleep now because we're going to be busy. So that was pretty funny and, and great. So we, we can make it. We're going to be making it. And there's tons of ideas and resources ready for you. So thank you for joining the session. Thank you, ladies, for this great conversation. And let's have a great day, Bam. Take care, everybody. Thanks. Thank you all. Bye.